Minister of FinTech. My name is uh, Georg Ludwigsson. I'm the founder and CEO of, of Manika. We're a European company and we um, work with some of the leading banks in Europe and, and in the world to uh, help them improve their digital banking solutions. Basically, we, we sell them software and help them innovate and move faster and uh, improve, improve customer engagement. Um, we have uh, some customers here in South Africa. We work with uh, Momentum, the insurance company, and also uh, we're working on a project with one of the major banks. A um, few words about me. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Manika is the third company that I start. Uh, passionate about personal finance. I was the person who was helping friends and family with their money issues. And uh, so I started three companies, two in FinTech, and uh, last one being Manika. I am a software engineer originally, um, so uh, Manika's products are probably based on my kind of vision for, for, for the products. And um, but, but the last few years I've been more on the sales, and marketing and business side. I'm an MBA from, from Harvard Business School. Uh, also a few words about the company to give you context. Um, our software powers digital banks used by over 35 million people globally. Uh, mostly in Europe, where we work with many of the largest banks. Commerzbank, largest bank in Germany, Santander, largest bank in, um, in Spain, and the largest in the Eurozone. Uh, in Tessa, the largest in Italy. We work with uh, IMG Direct in Australia and Spain. We work with MBank in Poland, which by many is uh, seen as one of the most innovative banks in the world. How many of you here have heard of MBank or seen it? So a few. Um, we are based in London, uh, but most of our product and uh, tech teams are in the Nordics. We are originally from, from Iceland. We were born out of the financial crisis in 2008, which hit Iceland hard. And um, there was a big demand for banks to give innovative solutions to people that had seen a big drop in purchasing power. And we were early movers in this space, and but since then we've, we've grown a lot. And uh, now we're privileged to work with many of the leading banks in the world. We define our purpose as helping leading banks around the world personalize their digital customer experience and also help them kind of innovate on their business model, create new value and new revenue streams from, from, data, from the data they have in their systems. Um, we see ourselves primarily as an innovation enabler. Yes, we, we sell software and technologies that speed those banks up in improving their digital channels, but we also help them think it through and design their future uh, digital channels and so on. And it's, a very, it's never been a more interesting time to be in this business because banks are now faced with more challenges, generally speaking, more disruptive threats than, than ever before. And uh, in many countries, and I have also seen signs of that here, uh, the banks seem to me to be picking up speed in, uh, in accelerating innovation and, and improving their uh, digital channels. Um, today's topics that I wanted to touch on. First, talk a little bit about these, the environment that retail banking is in, the disruptive forces that they are faced with. Second, what they are doing, and we have a lot of experience talking to many of the largest banks in the world, how, can they, how should they respond? What are they doing to improve? Um, a lot of it will be about how can they make their digital channels more engaging so that people use them daily and not just once in a while to keep a close relationship with the customer. Um, we'll also touch on business model innovation. Uh, traditional banks, they make money from interest rate differential and also from fees, but they're embracing data that allows for new types of business models, so there's innovation happening in, in retail banking business models. This is in the, the thinking that the digital bank is not just a place to do banking, but a place that, like an ecosystem where you're also helping people be smarter consumers and offering any service provider or retail business to come in and offer their service to, with the benefit of the user uh, apart. And, and also I will spend some time giving you our perspective on what does the kind of mobile and online bank of the future look like, what, what is personalized digital bank. We are working on several 
different projects with, with different banks, that some of which are aimed at improving their core online and mobile banking solutions, but in other cases they're launching new apps or solutions, even designed to compete with their own apps. Um, but starting with the um, disruptive forces, first um, it should come at no surprise at a conference like this that there's a lot of activity in fintech in the world. There's been an explosion of investment in the past few years, as you see from the chart here. Um, it more than it, it tripled from 2013 to 14, and again doubled to 15. And this year, it's it's not growing at the same rate. It's cooling off a bit, but still at a very high level. So there's been a countless number of, of fintechs in any kind of part of the financial services ecosystem have been born. Uh, and, and you can see that the biggest ones are payments, lending, wealth, and uh, and, and, and then all others in, in the other. Um, and uh, and this puts a lot of pressure on the traditional players like 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 retail banks. Um, and um, but there are other things as well. So the, there's a lot very crowded space and. Um, um, I think uh, retail banks generally don't see a huge impact on their business in terms of their revenue or profits yet. But they're really worried, more worried now than we've ever seen them before, that they might, this might be coming and they might be happening to them what, it, what happened to the music industry, that they <coughs> lose out on the business, someone comes in between them and their, and their customers. So disintermediation. Um, the, most of the banks we we talk to though, they are in, in the boardrooms, they're, they're still less worried about the startups because they they have various strategies to deal with them. Sometimes they can buy them or work with them if they're getting traction. But they're even more worried about the big tech companies like Facebook and Google and Amazon and Apple. Um, and there are clear signs that, that those guys are interested to move into financial services. WeChat in China, the leading messenger platform there already an enormous amount of financial transactions is happening directly there. Facebook is taking steps in a similar direction and, and, and so on. Um, finally, there's, there are some very important regulatory changes happening, at least in some parts of, of, of the world. Uh, Europe there is, is, is leading the way in, um, and they've passed legislation, the EU, that forces banks to open up their data, meaning that I as a customer of a bank or a financial or an insurance company, if I want to move to another bank or to a startup that has a much better mobile app or something, I can ask the bank to, to take the data with me. So the banks are being forced to open up free of charge APIs where I can move my data be between service providers. And not just for read only, also to authorize payments and uh, for, from my accounts. So there's a lot of startups that want to now become the mobile bank of Europe and convince people not to use their online and mobile bank from their banks, but use their app instead. And they can do it when this comes. It also means that Google or Facebook will be able to get this data and do innovation. Of course, the user has to always accept it. It's a similar initiative happening in the UK called Open Banking. UK is very aggressive. They want to be the fintech capital of the world. So they're trying to use legislation to give, give an ads and foster innovation. Um, and, um, and that's working out well. And there's discussion of it in other markets here. Uh, I don't know. But um, uh, here uh, we have some, for example, personal finance apps that have been doing account aggregation. But that's not based on uh, standard APIs. That's based on screen scraping the websites, which is a bit of a messy, messy solution. Uh, but the world of open data is, is coming, and that's another thing that's driving banks into action. Um, but as always, if, if there's a disruptive forces, there's, there's always there's opportunities. And um, uh, but the problem with the big banks, they, are, they usually are not great at executing. They, they know where they want to go, but 